Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second installment of our uh, OpenStack DEF Core Community Review. Uh, we're focused, it's uh, July 16th, depending on where you are in the world, um, at 6 o'clock Pacific time. And the focus of the call is really to get people to a point where we can have a community discussion around uh, the, the capabilities chart for Havana. So this is a Havana-focused document um, about capabilities and which ones uh, the DEF Core has identified, DEF Core committee has identified as core or not. And you'll notice I haven't put in the scores we got from the TC yet. I need to do that before the board meeting. Um, but in, in order to have that conversation, uh, it's important to walk backwards a little bit so everybody has an understanding of where, what, what these are. Um, and so I'll, what I'll do is, I'll, I'm, if it's all right, I'll do a couple minutes of preamble so that you understand, you know, we, we sort of baseline with where we are. Uh, and one of the things I can do is talk through a little bit more on the timeline. But um, and this deck is designed effectively to have to do the same overview, but slower. Uh, and what, I, what I've, I've been trying to reinforce very clearly here is DefCore is about commercial use. Um, and so there's there's other uses. We're, we're really working about helping vendors sell OpenStack products and have the user community who's using those products know what OpenStack is. That's what that, that slide that I'm, I'm building here is about. It's about oh, DevCore is about helping OpenStack establish its brand and have people be able to use the trademark and the name um, in, a, in a consistent way. Uh, and that's a lot of, so it's about interoperability. It's about consistency of experience. Um, and, and if we don't do those things, then ultimately we will lose control of the brand. Um, and that, that ends up making people not want to be part of the project or contribute to the project. Uh, so the stakes are pretty high to, to get it right. And so DEFCORE is the result, it's an pro ongoing process that's managed by the board. Uh, and we're in just in the middle, just the beginning of starting that process up. And we've identified that it's composed of two different things. There's a set of must-pass tests that define capabilities, uh, and the thing we're going to talk about today are the capabilities that are required for Havana. So of all the capabilities, there's a lot of tests. We, we've grouped them into uh, capability sets. Of those, only a small, small set are actually considered the core ones or the required ones to be an open product. Uh, and there are designated sections of code. So included in having to pass the tests that are required for the projects that have ta cap required capabilities, you must also include the designated sections of code. Uh, and that could be none or some, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and usually that's a, that ends up being a good Q&A, part of the Q&A when we talk about it. Um, I'm interested in feedback on this graphic. So I, I pulled together this graphic specifically for um, this, this presentation and, and Mondays, and I think it's gonna be useful uh, to, to explain how this works. So in, in DEF Core's approach to core, and, and it's iterative, so every, every release we're gonna adjust the definition based on what's in that release. Um, we, we look at the integrated release, uh, nothing more, nothing less, and in that integrated release, we identify core capabilities, which is a subset of all the projects, um, of, of each project, and not all projects will have core capabilities. Uh, in the matrix that we're looking at, uh, Neutron has no core capabilities um, specifically, and then things for Havana, there, there really wasn't enough test coverage of other things like key, even beyond this list. Uh, there's a, the orchestration is actually here. Um, but for the most part, it's you know, compute, uh, volume, object store, things like that. Uh, and then within each one of those projects, there's components of the code that we designate as, as needed, uh, so you must use if you want to be an OpenStack product. And it is possible to have projects with none. Um, and like Keystone is one that uh, most people understand will not have a, any designated code because there are implementations in the field that have fully replaced Keystone but yet have API compatibility. So it's sort of these two pieces, API compatibility and designated code. Um, and that's been really important because as a community, 
we we don't want uh, people to just emulate the APIs and say, hey, that's great. What we've what we've recognized is that this one here is that in order to have uh, interoperability, we have to be able to validate that the code works the way people expect. But there's also a common implementation need, sort of inherent in the way OpenStack is designed, and that we really expect you know people to use shared code. Um, and so what we're trying to do is to find what that looks like. It's something the, the DEF Core committee's taking up over the next couple of weeks. Um, we've spent a lot of time on it, so I think we've got a pretty good idea. Uh, and this graphic helps explain what is designated and not. So the white code is designated, things that help the standard API provide common function or cross-platform operation. Um, reference implementations aren't necessarily uh, designated but they're, they're part of what we expect to see in the, in the code base, uh, and it's part of the principles for DEF Core. And then things that would not be design, designated are things like extension APIs, things that we said are gonna be replaced, things we're deprecating or vendor, uh, you know, actual vendor uh, code isn't designated. So we'd have a, a serious problem with OpenStack if you required, say, an ICERA's uh, plugin to achieve the core capabilities. Uh, and we get into it. this. This then dives way down deep into a lot of the other things. This is the principles. We've gone through that a lot. Not, I'll let you do your own reading if you want on that. Um, but this graphic sort of sums up the way things go for this. So what we're saying is there's two vectors, designated code and, and tests. If you don't have a, if you don't have core capabilities, the must pass test, then the designated code doesn't really apply to your to that project. So OpenStack brand is both of those things. Um, I think I have a better graphic I need to pull in here because misconfigured is um, is uh, uh, misconfigured is an, is an interesting statement. So it's, the tests are failing, but I'm using the code. So if the tests are failing and you're using the code, you you are doing something wrong. Um, there's a future compatible mark that we were talking about, but this we're not at yet, um, which says that I pass the test, but I don't use the designated code. Uh, and then if you're not passing the test or <laughs> using the code, you're just not even going to be stuck. It's the, it's the anti case. Yep. Um, hey, do you mind doing that full screen? It might be easier to. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, let me oh, yeah. Um, Whoops. Or just do, what do you do, slide, slideshow or something like that? Oh, you know, I hadn't even thought to do that. Uh, there's a way to do that. Slide? No. Uh, present? Mm. Cool. There you go. Lovely. Much That'll better. be the recording, <laughs> too. So, um, and, and then what we did with this slide was we pulled this into some actual examples and I'm not this is this was the talk we already gave and it's recorded and I'm not going to try and explain this we, I can go back through this and explain it um, although this the example helps so Nova uh, has core capabilities and designated code Keystone has uh, core capabilities but not designated code and then we have examples in here where they don't have any code um, but they they're still gonna they, they're still open stack projects so someone like uh, Trove might not have designated code or tests, but if you deploy it, there's, there's, it's karma. It, it's a great thing to deploy projects that aren't core. Uh, that's part of how things become core is by having people use them and adopt them. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want to, we're not throwing things into core unless we actually are expected to defend those APIs um, for a long period of time. It's because it's, it has to do with commercial use and user uh, user expectation of interoperability. Good phrase. Um, so what what we did was this process can get very. I'll make this bigger too. The, this the process when we started it was pretty. Um, I wouldn't say confrontational. I would say that there were a lot of different opinions that didn't align. Uh, and I guess that does get confrontational. So we, we were having trouble converging on what is core and what's not core, and so we broke the process down into smaller decision points. 
which end up being these these criteria. Uh, and I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time unless people want to do um, in Q and A about how these criteria work. But we came up with um, 12 different criteria that broke into four major categories of of OpenStack goodness that we thought that if a capability showed strength in all four categories, then we would want to be, that would make it a candidate for being core. The board can overrule these scores if we feel like there's a need. Uh, however, that this is, if we're doing that on a regular basis, we have a serious problem. Um, and so what we did was we put all these capabilities in, we took a first pass at, the capabilities are backed up by tests. Uh, I have, I actually have a page up. I'm going to go out of full screen again. Um, I think I put this, if I didn't put this link in, I do want to have this link in here. So there's actually a def core section. We're going to move this a little bit, but um, there's a JSON file that says each capability and what tests are in each capability. So the capabilities are, are not, um, they're not fabricated out of, um, out of, Board uh, fantasy. They're they're actually built out of a technical decision about which tests uh, coalesce to a capability. And our expectation is the technical community will own uh, the naming and the definition of those capabilities and, and which tests are in the capabilities. Because uh, there's an exponential growth in tests, which is excellent, and that means that for every one of these capabilities, every every release cycle, there will be new tests coming in, the vendors will be expected to pass. Uh, and that's not a board, it shouldn't be a board activity, that's really a community activity. Scoring, however, will be something that's managed by the DEF Core committee on an ongoing basis. Um, and so the, the sort of the, the purpose of, of this meeting is to introduce exactly this, this whole concept, that we have a set of capabilities, supported by tests underlined that have been scored uh, through DEF core and then reviewed by the TC in the places where we, we had ambivalent answers or uh, um, un, we couldn't make a decision. And so from that perspective, we came up with a clear set of tests that we felt were uh, core. Those are the green ones uh, up to so the, score, the score 75 ends up being sort of cut off. And in analysis, uh, there's a pretty clear break between the core tests and then the, 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 on the bubble test, the yellow ones. And then there's a, a very clear break between the ones that are below that. Um, and our goal tonight is to show this, this list and get feedback for people saying, wait, that doesn't, the whole, you know, the whole process doesn't make sense. The score on one of these things doesn't make sense or the, the actual capability doesn't make sense. Um, we really want to give people a chance to say, wait, this doesn't, you know, I don't understand what's going on, answer questions, um, and, and if there are concerns, raise them. If, and I, I, I'll say this um, multiple times. If, if you don't, if, if you think of it later, we're available. This isn't, you know, we're not closing this down and locking it uh, today. It's, this is an ongoing evolutionary process, and we're giving people a lot of time to digest the implications and the choices. Um, so I guess the, the, the one question I have in there is that there is, it simply seems to be a score. There is, doesn't seem to be any concept of weight. Is that correct? I can hear somebody talking. I don't know if that's Jeff. Okay, this is Jeff. Uh, um, so I see no concept of weight in the, um, in the in the the, the model, uh, is it is is that intentional or not? Ann, Jeff, are you still there? I'm still here. This. That... Uh, can you hear me? Okay, Jeff, I can barely hear you. Okay, I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch the phone. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say I could relay the question because I can hear him fine. Okay, relay. Please relay that. Sure, the question is, is there any concept of weighting to any of the tests? Try it again. Is there any concept of weighting to any of the tests? 
And I'll put it. Is there a chat window? I'll put it in the chat no, window. I can, I, I can hear you fine now. It was me. Um, Jeff, it wasn't you. If you're adjusting your sound. Um, okay. I, I twiddled. I, I tweaked my my headset and it it fixed it. Yes, there is a concept of waiting. Um, however, right now we haven't done any. So. Um, in the principles that set this up, we said we could weight test differently or criteria differently. Um, we did them all even and the results seem plausible. So we reserved, we reserved the right to, to weight differently, but for now we're not. Okay, the concern I have is that it is possible then that there is some major core piece of functionality which is omitted and without which things don't really work and yet we can still get a passing score. Yes. That that would be exactly the type of thing I, I would like a lot of eyes to look at in this. Um, and we have some we have some tests, we have some criteria that are designed to um, address that. So in the proximity uh, column, that last column on the right, the idea with that is that it's actually used to bring in adjacent functions. So you would actually score up an API that was necessary. Um, okay, that's that's very useful. I, uh, I need to think more about how proximity and dependency and contingency and waiting fit together. <laughs> it's a great question, and it's, it's exactly the type of analysis I'd love to have um, people do. Right. Because there, it's it's very possible that there is a um, that there is a test. There's a capability that that is is implied as required in this list. Although I don't think there. I think we've we've passed through it once. But I'm confident that we missed things as much as we've spent time with this. So additional review is necessary. Okay. So yeah, I mean that my reaction is this is fantastic. I want to I want to take this away and sit down with my fellow Cisco cloud architects and and spend a couple of hours just drilling into it uh, with awesome. all of the decisions we're making and then get back to you on that. I mean that's the uh, that that's that that, that I, I I'm not I'm not going to trust myself to come up with all the with, with, with useful answers uh, on the fly in the call but this is going to be very very important. Thank you. I I no I haven't met a single person yet who can look at this matrix and understand every piece. The open stack is just too big. Yeah. So um it has to be a team effort, and so I would I would really appreciate if you have if you bring this back to your counterparts and have them look at it, scratch their heads on it. Okay, that's exactly that's exactly what we want. Yep. So give me a deadline for when you need the feedback back, because as we know all know, without a deadline, things will uh, <laughs> things slide. Yeah. So this this list is going to so. Um, Everything's designed to ha to not create high blood pressure, although deadlines are important. Um, this list is going to the board on Monday, sorry, Tuesday, to be approved as an advisory list, which which means that for, so we're not enforcing uh, this core definition for Havana. What we're doing is we're we're asking people to measure this list against their products and come back and say, oh, this would suck, or Okay, we're cool with it. Yep. So, the the ideal deadline would be the September board meeting, which I think is the first week of September, um, because that's the meeting we're going to approve the new definition. We're going to approve Havana designated code, um, and so at that meeting is when I expect we'll have the whole Havana advisory set locked in. Good. Okay. That that that, that works. That, that, no, that works fine. That works fine. Now the 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 other thing is, um, 
Is there a document which contains the two or three sentences behind each one of the line items to clarify what is meant by that? Yes, or sir. Is, wait, there is. Okay. So in, and I'll, I'll, I'll link it back into the wiki here. Um, so in, this is actually, this is on the OpenStack wiki. This is, this is actually a board approved document. And so this has that four, the four major sections, and then each section, it has a sentence describing what these, what these are and what they mean. And there's, there's deeper discussion um, around these if, if, you need, if you need to find them. My blog. Has Great, them. That's, the, that's the column section. That's, those are the column headings. I'm, I, I was referring to the, row, the, the rows. Ah, so the rows, okay. you have to go to the tests. To figure out what the rows mean right now. Okay, good. Actually, um, Rob, do you mind giving an example with uh, compute underbar off? Of course. That'd be awesome. Thanks. So compute off. Or compute dash off. Be precise. I'm looking for it. Oops. Seventh. Seventh down. Oh, that's this one. Okay. That one. So walk across the columns. Walk across uh, the columns. Tell me and... how to find out what the test is that runs, what tests oh, are related okay. to compute dash off. Yeah. Because I really want to write the document because I'm going crazy. <laughs> so I might as well write it. You know, so if, here if, uh, yeah. So here's, here's compute auth. It's in this capabilities JSON file. And so this is the, there's only one test in compute auth. That right. And then where do I go? I went to capabilities and search for test underbar get underbar metadata. That doesn't make sense because that that's a bug because there should be fourteen tests in that. Yeah. Well, that that could <laughs> that could expand, couldn't it? Um, no, it, it it could, but there's actually a source document that I use to generate this uh, this JSON okay. file. Um, okay. That's troubling. Uh, so there's there's a um, a Google Drive. Hold on, let me find it. Um, that's an excellent question. There's a Google Drive that has capability score matrix in it. So this is this is the this is the raw data, um, and uh, let's see. So this is the distribution of scores. And There's the mapping. Okay. Uh, Maybe. But there's. This is actually this is this is the calculation. It's not the raw data. Hold on. Let me see if I can find the raw. Cause there's there's a different document. I got into Tempest. Would I find it? Uh, you're you're not gonna the, the no the. Core, hold on. Um, hold on, I I have it in here. Um, I think this is it. Yeah. And the, I'm glad you I'm glad you're identifying that because that's. Um, that's exactly the uh, yes. Okay, so here is so this is the list, Anne, right here. Um, okay. And so this is this was this is work that was done in combination. Um, team from IBM came up with this list, and then Troy uh, did an amazing amount of work to try and uh, lock all these capabilities in. So this is where mm. so compute auth. I mean, even so if I could I'm, just do a one sentence, I'm trying yeah, to figure out how to document. You know, I would. So I would love. So what? What our hope was is that the PTLs for the project would provide, um, and I'm ha I'd love to see uh, friendlier names and short descriptions of what each capability meant. Um, and if if they felt that we needed to reorganize the capabilities and switch the tests around. I'm I'm okay with that. Uh we had some we started this process with John 
um, Dickerson on Swift, and the challenge is he was trying to create capabilities that didn't match tests. So the, the balance is that mm -hmm. we're test driven. So if you don't have tests, you don't have capabilities. Um, we don't mm -hmm. we don't want to um, create the capabilities and say, well, this this is a capability, but it has no tests. Um, well, we could do that to identify gaps in the community. It really, from a DEF core perspective, uh, it's the tree falling in the woods with nobody around. Yep. Um, so to actually read the test under bar V2, under bar token, where do I go read that? Which, what do you mean? Uh, it was like line 3. Oh, are you looking so? at the actual accent? The, uh, yeah. yeah. So the test case names, yeah. Do I read that in each individual repo? Um, on your other so spreadsheet? The other spread, this one. This one, this, where do this, I go? This, so this one, th don't, this, don't read this one as the test. This is actually computational. This is Troy remapping. This is a mapping. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is his work. This is his workspace. That's why I was trying to not get to. That's that. cool. And then the last one you were on is this one. And I can I can share. Let me make sure that there's a public link for it. Uh, yeah. It's public. So I can. I'll, I'll okay. Take the link. If I go see. search in Tempest. Whoops. And so anybody with the link. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can view it. That's exactly right. I mean, as a matter of as a matter of process, some we some somebody needs to be able to go all the way from a a, a score to the lines of code that actually tested the capability that ge that generated that score. Yes. You need to be able to you need to be able to join all dots. And and so what what we well ideally doing, yes and, and yeah. yeah well I mean, the, that's, that's totally, totally, yeah totally yeah one hundred percent and. And so we're actually changing that this this file is actually about to be is deprecated, and we're introducing a a, a, a simpler format file that um, has uh, uh, we use a, a fully qualified test path that should map directly to the file the test is in, so that you can find the test. I, I Hallelujah! Can, you completely agree with you that the utility here is the top level capability is cleanly yes or no and you know why because it has 12 criteria and that maps directly into functioning code yep that, that is very much and so what what we want is we want uh, people in the community to be highly incented to take capabilities they think are important write suites for them to validate that they work and then um, deploy those and we'll run have us run tests against it so that we can see that they are popular. And by being very explicit about this, right, and, and, and I know Anne is already aware, you know, documented and discoverable are important capabilities here, right? So having a, an API documented is just as important to us as having it stable and complete and part of the future direction, right? It's, it's we're trying, this is why everything's equally weighted right now. We'll turn the knobs over time to adjust behaviors if we need it. But we, you know, very clear signals to the community what's important. Sorry, you got, you got me excited. I just wanted to think. Yeah, this is good. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, I think this is, this is heading exactly the right direction here. Um, and, you know, the, I know that I'm going to need to be able to take this process and our results and make them comprehensible to C-level executives. Um, and so, you know, the, 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 more, the more material there is to sort of to help to walk through that process and explain what's going on, uh, the better. And if you find places that are confusing, please let me know. So one of the, yep. one of the consistent things I've tried to do is build these pictures not those best pictures, but these pictures um, that help people. What I found is, is that when we reach, it, you know, it's six months of work, and it, you sum it up in a picture like this. Um, that these these translate for to executives really really easily. Yeah. Um, so instead of talking about twelve criteria, you're talking about four, 
for categories. Um, and this flowchart I, we can now explain pretty straight in a straightforward way. Yeah. This this uh, designated section illustration seemed to also help people, and I'm hoping um, this one also looks like the Death Star, but. Um, Death Star Pi. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 other the, the one of the questions which I which which does come up a lot with uh, when I'm talking to to our product management people about this is the time dimension of this. Um, what does it mean for something to be a cons to represent a consistent multi-release um, service? Um, you know when 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 there are when there are when there are um, just because you're just because OpenStack deprecates something doesn't mean that all of the all of the, the the services that implement OpenStack will deprecate things at the same rate. Uh, actually, we, we ex what we're really trying to do is make sure that things that are in core stay on in core. Um, yep. And so yes, there there will be a much slower deprecation cycle and one of the one of the things that I haven't talked about much at all in this is uh, this project called RefStack which is designed to allow people to take do a test result of their a test run of Tempest against their a working cloud and then upload the results to a shared to RefStack which is a shared community repository so that we can actually start collecting past data of which capabilities are actually working in the field. And so um, we'll be able to actually pull in some real data about these. These are things that are, are working in the field or not working. Um, from a deprecation perspective, that starts to get tricky. Yeah. Um, and that handles the tests just fine. It doesn't say anything about the designated code. That just like just like uh, tests, it's going to be a release by release thing. So I fully expect the designated code uh, to change release to release um, as as the project changes or as we learn things about the project. And a, a classic one is Swift. Uh, Swift generates quite a bit of this uh, discussion in, around this because I, I didn't highlight it. It's always worth highlighting. Uh, two capabilities from Swift are in the core list. There's an object store client and an object store or object and an object store container that are storing indicated should be included as core capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, because you also need designated code, the board is about to take up the more thorny question, which is, hey, Swift capabilities look like they should be core. But because there's a lot of implementations of OpenStack that don't include the Swift code, it likely would have a zero designated section in Havana. Swift has been refactoring and, and becoming more modular over the last couple of releases. And so it's possible that in Juno, we actually would change the designated sections for Swift to, in, to include some code where before we didn't. Uh, and you might have the opposite trend. Also, uh, Cinder has been refactoring how it operates, and it might have less designated code uh, based on its its how it's refactoring its its drivers. So yep. I don't know that. I'm not saying that's the, the case. I'm, yeah. The, the <laughs> yeah, we're right in the middle of that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and there's so there's there's plenty of knobs to turn release to release, and that was what I brought up. This is um, this is this is this, this is pretty complex, and uh, yep. there's there's a pending blog post about this. It's still being reviewed by the Def Core uh, committee, but I think we're getting pretty close. Um, where this actually talks about the release by release flow of all the different artifacts. Um, yellow is community input here. Um, and actually, if, if in the technical sense, we're, we're sort of in this box right now, getting trying to get community input about our, our recommendation for Havana. Um, we thought we'd be closer on designated sections. We're just doing it for core capabilities. But the idea here is that 
we start with the last release and then we get input um, and then we'll go through the a cycle during the release where we actually uh, test it score it do all the all the work and come out with a, a final recommendation um, and then there's actually a relief valve from a vendor perspective for vendors to come in and say wait a second there's tests that got added into this release that aren't don't make sense or aren't working or aren't consistent and so there is a uh, uh, an exception process if you would um, where a vendor can say wait the, you know this this new test that doesn't make sense we need some relief from it yep okay. so I have to say that uh, that I'm I'm waiting for the for the, the ice house material um, much more urgently than I am for the Havana material because one of the things which I am seeing is that uh, companies like Red Hat and Ubuntu both um, are they look as though they're going to be treating ice house as the equivalent of a long-term support uh, release um, mm. which will be interesting you know so this is a as a way that the way that, that, uh, that Ubuntu designates some of their releases uh, as uh, as LTS, and then they have a bunch of other releases, and then they catch up. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> Just from a timing perspective, I house aligns with their LTS cycle. Yeah, but, but it's also but, it, but it's all, we're also we're also hearing that from Red Hat and from others as well. As well. Uh, okay. Yes, I. I this is one of those things where the timer beeps and we're taking the cake out of the oven, whether the, the yep, the, whether it's wrong side or not. Um, I understand. So I, I actually have a, a very concise answer for you though on on how to get to Ice House faster. The thing that gates the speed of this process is community saying yes to it. Yep. So um, silence forces us to go slower. Um, agreement or, or actually even negative discussion in some cases lets us move more 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 directly. Yeah. Um, and so the, the best thing you can do to help us get to Ice House quickly is uh, have you know be public in support uh, or raise issues negatively that we can address um, and that will accelerate the process. Got it. Well, we'll do. We'll, speaking for the for the uh, uh, Cisco Cloud Services team, we'll we'll get we'll we'll jump on the on the review of the material as quickly as possible, and I will be uh, making sure that Lou, that that our board member Lou Tucker is uh, is is fully uh, <laughs> fully enthusiastic. <laughs> and well, Lou's Lou's been been pretty active on the committee, so I, yeah. I have I have no yeah. no concerns with Lou. Um, yeah. And, and so so far, my experience has been that when we walk through the process, people understand what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's high stakes. So, yes, it is. Um, okay. It certainly is. I'm going to pause for more questions. I mean, I know it's just Ann and Jeff, but what else? What else, what else do you guys not want to want to talk through? I think I've touched on the main things I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'd, I'd really need to dive into this one um, and look at it from. You know, one of the things I need to do. We, 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 do, we have this big intercloud initiative, which is actually plays beautifully into this because it, we're, we're really focusing on the interoperability between uh, private and public and uh, federated uh, open stack clouds, um, and so. You know, getting things lined up around around uh, interoperability and, and and conformance is pretty much central to that. We would love to have participation in RefStack because that's yep. exactly what we're driving. Yep. Um, I'll push that. And what, think that would that would be great. Um, we're at a point where we're going to start needing people to just test their cloud, and start upload, uploading the results. Um, I I can I can give you the two questions. That the first project answer or brought up um, that we haven't covered. Uh, one of them is we somebody identified uh, that images two is probably misscored. Um, 
because in Havana it just wasn't stable enough to be widely used, and so mm -hmm. we need to revisit that. Um, they actually suggested it probably is not appropriate for um, for uh, us to include as core, and which is really good feedback. The other one is why the negative ones, and uh, we made the decision halfway through the process that non only to include the non-admin APIs. Uh, from an interoperability perspective, if you're using a public cloud, they're not accessible. So it made yeah. a lot of sense. But we didn't want to lose the scores. So uh, we anticipate that there may be a future private core for private clouds, um, so a you know, future submark or something like that. Um, and so we didn't want to lose the, the, the score because just like uh, the other side, there's a pretty clear delineation of administrative APIs that you would expect to see in every cloud and ones that are um, probably less common or, or you know, still going through the maturation process. Yep. One thing I would expect to see down in a, in a future version of this is going beyond the capability in the sense of uh, things you can verify via API uh, uh, tests um, to uh, data model completeness, particularly around the uh, uh, metrics, um, that that and that's going to be an, that's going to be an interesting thing to to figure out how to capture and score that. It, it would be wonderful to have some performance and scale scale metrics and uh, things like that. Is that, yeah. that what you're thinking? Yeah, exactly. I mean, one of the one of the one of the things that we're we're one of the things that we're running into right now is. Uh, a real frustration that the consistency of implementation of, um, of Solometer data gathering is very, very poor. There's the, the, really the, the, the various projects from all over the map. And it would, it would be very nice to get some kind of core data model uh, consistency so that, we, so, that we, so that we actually know what, we, know what you can rely on. I, I think that so right now we made the decision to have all the test results be binary. Yep. But uh, in early conversations, that we were actually sort of sad to give up uh, more quantitative. Um, I guess they'd be qualitative results, not quantitative. But uh, we would love to be able to start incorporating a broader test test data set into this, even if they didn't end up being core. Yeah, and my hope is that by making tests sort of the interoperability standard, that we're, we'll encourage more circulation of results like that. Yeah, we'll. Uh, I think I think we'll probably uh, we'll probably be volunteering some uh, material and some uh, support in that area. Wonderful. That's this is I'm, I I love test driven development <laughs> and 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 test as as a component for this and. This is to me that 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 would strengthen OpenStack, you know, more in a lot of ways than adding adding more code or features at this, yeah. especially at this point. Okay, that's that's, that's my uh, that's my topics, and uh, now all we have to do is to sort of finish it up, and then and you have to make sure that we we have a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a, I think there is a need for a kind of almost a kind of cookbook of of uh, which 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 can people can use to both of uh, to familiarize themselves with the process and, and yes including you know how they click through to get to find the find the code that yeah. does the uh, does the scoring and then how do we actually roll that back up so you know, people can understand what the results really mean yeah and and the we're going to end up with this in the JSON file that drives a website. And so somebody who doesn't like the way a capability is worded or thinks that, you know, it's not clear enough can just submit a patch to change it. Right? It'll get to well, um, Garrett. Right. Yep, exactly. And so, but that, it lowers the barrier for somebody saying this capability needs a description. They can go write it. Yeah. Um, Good.
Yeah, we're trying. We're, nothing. You know, once again, no blood, no high blood pressure. <laughs> yeah. All the, all the. So, uh, so what are, are you are you planning a a, a session on this at uh, in in Paris? I I see it. Yes, you. The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll definitely submit one uh, to give an update for it. Yes. Um, yep. And so that'll that'll be. We'll see where people stand with voting. Um, we don't we don't really have a section for you know generalized stuff that you need to know about open stacks. So sometimes these. <laughs> sessions make it as voted in, and sometimes they don't. Whether it's important or not, you lose out to the. Um, uh, I, I laugh, laugh about the Mirantis title about uh, goats. They have to leave about goats. Sometimes goats <laughs> yes. Uh, but I'll come. I'll come up good. with a snazzy title. Sounds good. All right. Okay. I, pr I really okay. appreciate the feedback and the discussion. Well, thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, yeah. All right, good night, and I'll probably see you both at Oscon in a couple in a couple of days. I I actually will will not be. I'm, I'm I've got I've got way too much uh, way too much stuff to do on actually deploying our cloud. <laughs> ah, I to see that. Oh, damn. <laughs> we we're rolling rolling out in two more data centers uh, over the next uh, over the next couple of weeks, and uh, wow. yeah. And uh, at, at, at fairly significant scale, and uh, and the, you know, the the other thing that I really wish that I could, that the for test for testing I, I really want this is nothing to do with nothing to do with the with with ref, with the ref stack or and def core, but I really wish we we were doing a better job on testing of, of HA capabilities and open stack. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I. I I we're I know my team struggles with the same thing. Uh, we use Tempest Suite to do it. Um, then the temp that but, exposes is the Tempest. So. Yeah, it's a, I want, but, but it, we really do need to need to get the fault injection as part of the testing methodology, and we're not there really really there yet. Uh, oh well, we'll get there. We will. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Take care. Good night. Bye.